How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of One Soccer Today. I have assembled an absurd collection of talent and charisma and just overall fantastic gentlemen to share the next 60 minutes with you. It is, of course, Jordan Wilson, Oliver Platt, and a very special guest on today's show, and that would be the president of League One Canada, Dino Rossi. Jordan, we had never worked a show together. Now we're on two in the last 17 hours. So I think you and I are going to start to build this chemistry a little bit more and keep the momentum rolling, just like League One Canada is doing professional segue there's a lot to talk about with league one canada that is of course some pretty exciting news with the talks about a potential league one atlantic exploring that market there's also the league one alberta showcase but don't take it from me take it from the man himself who represents his incredible team doing some fantastic work for the canadian soccer ecosystem dino for those who might still be learning the ropes of canadian soccer and, and expanding their view not just the national teams not just the cpl or their favorite canadian mls side can you just give everyone a refresher and an update before we get into the minutia of the Atlantic and Albertan news with what League One Canada is all about and, and how far you and your team have come in the past 18 to 24 months? Thanks, Adam. And uh, thank you, gentlemen, for having me on. Um, League One Canada was formed uh, early in 2022. Um, uh, the purpose was to align and unify all of the standards-based pro-am leagues that are in existence in Canada at this present time, that being uh, League One BC, League One Ontario, and the PLSQ in Quebec. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of objectives. One of them was to create a national championship, which we did last year with the launch of the Women's Interprovincial Championship and hope to expand it to the men uh, very soon. Uh, but another key objective of uh, this project was to bring this level of football to all 10 provinces in Canada. And uh, with the news, this the last uh, seven days of the launch of the League One Alberta Exhibition Series and the, uh, the exploration we're going to be doing, as you, you hinted at, um, heading out to uh, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick uh, at the end of March to do presentations and uh, take a lot of questions and, and learn about that market and, and, and what the realities are out there. Uh, we're really excited about the potential for uh, bringing uh, League One football out to the Atlantic provinces. And then uh, the last step on our journey is going to be to, uh, to, to fill out the, uh, the dance card by getting Manitoba and Saskatchewan on board, which uh, that's our hope. Uh, in the you know to work on it between 2024 and 25 as well so uh by 25 by 2025 our expectation is that we will have leagues across this country uh serving players male and female uh you know in their in their home provinces and uh that makes us very excited Dean, I th thanks a lot for joining us and that timeline seems incredible like absolutely brilliant for, for soccer in this country but did, did you think Maybe a few years ago when, you know, you were with League One Ontario and then you obviously see that it, it will kind of come together under that that national umbrella. Did you think the progress could, could be this fast? Because it seems like it, it really is accelerating quickly right now. You know, if, I, if you had asked me in 2017, could we be here this quickly? I'd say no, but things have happened since 2017. The launch right. of the CPL is a huge accelerant. And uh, once we have pro football for women in this country, uh, that's just going to take us to the moon. I mean, we're going to be a fully formed soccer ecosystem uh, at the elite high performance level. And, uh, you know, the, the potential is endless. But, yes, the, uh, the, the launch of the CPL, uh, CSB purchasing League One Ontario, uh, the, the, um, the number of players that we see from our level of play uh, playing important roles in the CPL, playing important roles for the Canadian national team, male and female, uh, that kind of stuff just, it, 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 it solidifies the vision we had when we started League One Ontario in 2014, that, that this, we would be able to build a pathway. And now that pathway is just becoming so much more clear at, in the three provinces where we already exist. And now the plan is to take that Canada wide and and serve all the, the the players who have the potential and the ambition to achieve their goals um, and give them that platform. So when you go out to you know Atlantic Canada or Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, you mentioned next as well. What what are kind of the steps that you need to take? What needs to happen here to to make this a reality? 
when we get out to Atlantic Canada, obviously there are certain, you know, uh, demographic realities that are very different from Ontario. You know, right. Ontario, Quebec, uh, BC, those in, in many parts of the world would be countries all on their own, right? Uh, the population out east is is smaller. The uh, the the football, uh, uh, you know, the, the the number of players out there is 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 smaller as well. So we're going to need to get a real strong understanding of what uh, the, the the realities are. What is the player pool? Uh, you know, we don't have all the answers. We don't even pretend to today. Our our goal at the beginning is to listen much more than we speak. Uh, and be able to take back the learnings from these trips to help uh, put together a strategy, work with the various stakeholders, the PSOs out there, the Nova Scotia soccer, New Brunswick soccer, PEI soccer, and, and Newfoundland soccer. They are important partners in this, in this project, and uh, together we are going to uh, work to build a framework uh, that allows us to go out into the market and uh, request, uh, you know, it, letters of interest from organizations who want to be the founding uh the founding clubs in this in this new uh enterprise uh thanks for being here with us i, I have so many questions for you but the first one being it's beautiful that in this beautiful big vast country canada i guess it's no secret that there are pockets that in the country that kind of were overlooked now league one with the ambition that you guys have and just kind of reaching all these provinces and getting certain players is it I guess a part of uh, your vision or League One's vision to have like feeder clubs going to the CPL. And what I mean by that is just like a province and then hopefully you have a professional team that, that players could just feed into. I think uh, on the male side, I, I think that it's inevitable at some point we're going to see some of that. On the women's side right now, obviously we don't have that opportunity but we're seeing more and more of our players find uh, exciting uh, professional uh, opportunities in Europe uh, this year it's just been amazing how many of our female players have made that move we uh, we think that there's going to be more working together uh, between CPL clubs and League one clubs across this country uh, where where you know CPL clubs exist and um, and and I think it's inevitable that you're going to see uh, a tighter working relationship and see more movement um, in season, not just out of season. Uh, because we all know that, you know, CPL clubs operate on, on with fairly small rosters and uh, having that flexibility is, is enormously beneficial. So um, it, it's exciting times and it's very fluid. So, uh, you know, you never know exactly what's going to happen, but uh, I, I know that the working relationship is strong and only getting stronger. And it's so important to see too that the there is vision there for more, and there does there's desire, there's appetite to continue to expand. We look forward to hearing what comes out of those meetings at the end of the month. Uh, on a more um, approximate or closer timeline, that is of course the exhibition series with League One Alberta and, and what that could turn into. But four clubs signed on, both in the men's and women's. Dino, when you talk about the the different steps you need to see when you do that research, when you have those conversations for the other provinces who might want to be next, and I think there's a, a massive desire to be next, what was it about the Alberta market that excited you and said, okay, they're, they're ready for this and, and we're ready to, to have them into the fold as well? Uh, well, you know, Alberta is, has been a uh, outstanding developer of talent in this country for a very long time. Um, and it, it, was, it was inevitable that they were going to be the next place where we launched. Um, and I have to give all the credit, frankly, to the uh, the leadership group at Alberta Soccer, who have taken this project on on a very short timeline, even shorter than the timeline we had in Ontario when we launched mm -hmm. in 2014. We launched that league in like less than 100 days. They've got around 70 days, I think, to to go from concept to uh, to kicking a ball. So they've got a lot of work ahead of them. But I, I I'm so appreciative of their ambition and their commitment to their, their, their talented players. Uh, the clubs in that province have been huge uh, proponents for bringing this level of football to their, to their province. Uh, without them, uh, I don't know if this happens in 2023. Uh, there's a lot of credit to go around, but uh, Alberta is an amazing market. There's so much, so much talent out there. Uh, we're seeing 
you know, we've seen over the last couple of years a lot of really great players from Western Canada come over over to Ontario to play in League One Ontario because there wasn't anything at home. Now they're right. going to have great options going forward. Do you know, when when you look at it's obviously great to see all these different leagues and and, and opportunities popping up in you know, different provinces. But when you look at League One Canada nationally, what, what's kind of your aspiration going forward over the next few years in terms of how that that entire umbrella can, can continue to grow? Well, as I stated earlier, by 2025, we want to be operating in all 10 provinces. That is our, what we think is not necessarily even a, an overly ambitious goal. We think it's realistic. There's a lot of work to be done to make that happen, but we think it can be done. Um, and then the next stage of this will be to, uh, to, to, to build out the interprovincial championship. We think that that is critical. Uh, just like, uh, let's say, junior hockey has the Memorial Cup, uh, which in, has enormous history, we want to start creating our own history. And we think the interprovincial championship is a, uh, is a great uh, a, a platform for that. Um, and, and then, you know, there's going to be other things that we're going to want to do over time. We talk about alignment a lot, and that is not just like rules per se, uh, but also schedules. Right now, our schedules are quite all over the place uh, between our, our partner leagues right now. We need to bring that together. That will help us uh, when it comes to operating a tournament like the Interprovincial Championship, but it'll help us in a lot of other ways. Um, but, but yeah, you know, today we're very much in an operational and, 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 and launching uh, mode getting things off the ground and and then you know over the next couple of years we're going to start rolling out the the other phases of the st strategic plan that we've got that uh, will just uh, make this uh, this level of play so clear and obvious to young players who are playing youth soccer at the in their home community how they can uh, go from you know being a, a talented u12 player to perhaps being a professional and maybe even representing their country at some point down the road and 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 making those pathways clear and easy for everybody to understand.